especially Craig Dykers. And I just want to know um, how does someone get to live between Oslo and New York? This is exactly the two cities because you never can leave one of the places when it's cold and go to the next one when it's warm. You're flying basically from cold to cold. So anyway, I would recommend a city in the southern hemisphere. Um, but let's, uh, let's gather a hand of applause for someone who has worked on the uh, Memorial Museum at the World Trade Center, who has worked at the Alexander Library and the National Opera in Norway and is going to be filmed while doing the presentation, more stressed than just dealing with you guys, uh, by the Norwegian National TV, so we should also welcome them. Great, thank you. Uh, well, many of you know that uh, we uh, have arrived in New York City after winning the commission uh, for Ground Zero, uh, some years ago, and our most recent commission, the last commission we've received, is to work at Times Square. So apparently we're the go-to architects if you want to deal with irrational numbers or platonic shapes. But it's uh, been a, a kind of an interesting exercise, and um, I, today we'll just mainly talk about, actually only talk about the World Trade Center site, because there was a big ceremony yesterday. For those of you that don't know about our work there, we're the tiny little red thing. Uh, down there at the bottom, surrounded by giants. Uh, our work is to develop a museum pavilion at the World Trade Center site that is really the most intimate and um, most small-scale project at that place. It is part of a larger idea that the city has worked on for a number of years, actually even before the September 11th tragedies uh, 10 years ago, and that was to create a river-to-river -river walk that would join the Hudson River and the East River, and also create a kind of cultural nexus in Lower Manhattan, an extension of Western Broad West Broadway down into the heart of the financial district. Our project then was to sort of in, 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 in integrate that way of thinking that the city had already realized with the new World Trade Center site. So the project is this little kind of trapezoidal shape uh, d directly at the northeast corner of the Memorial Plaza and it links the transportation hub by Santiago Calatrava with a proposed performing arts center. What's interesting about the project uh, that we have is that it sort of sits at this crux location between the frozen idea that is the memorial itself incised into the ground and the kind of enormous uh, optimism that the skyscrapers create as they move towards the sky. We are the kind of link, the present, the everyday transition. And here's some pictures that were taken really uh, some of them yesterday, some of them during the construction, looking across the uh, north pool of the World Trade Center site towards the new pavilion. And there is a kind of horizontality that the building creates, a sort of bringing down the scale of the surrounding skyscrapers and merging the everyday with what is essentially um, two worlds, the world of the future and the world of the past. It was very difficult to work with many of the different agencies uh, on this project as there were a number of um, uh, very wide-ranging views as to what should be there. But uh, from our perspective, we were simply interested in integrating the urban context to this place that has so much traumatic uh, energy associated with it and try to transform that into a, a new sense of optimism. And this is looking a picture I snapped the other day, just looking down West Broadway from a few blocks away, and it really begins to tell you that you're approaching something. Without this sort of physical structure there, with just the sort of memorials or the skyscrapers, it would be very difficult to apprehend or understand where you were in the cityscape. So these sort of lower horizontal form of the building allows you to connect to a number of different um, aspects of the site. It's looking for alongside the memorial um, um, pools where the names of the deceased are. And you can see that the building sort of rises itself up and it points to uh, the northeast corner of the site where there's St. Paul's Church, the new Frank Geary building, and eventually will be the Calatrava train station. So the imagery of the, uh, that you're seeing is meant to symbolize this notion of, of movement of, of vision, that you're, you're, as you're moving through the site or around the site, your body is sort of engaging with the, the character of the facade. And sometimes the facade does sort of surprising things. Here, because of the fold in the building shape, the um, metal facade that you're seeing uh, is reflected in some glass and around the atrium. So there's sort of a ghost building, a building within the building that suddenly appears as you approach it from different angles. 
And from the south side, well, right now the construction is not complete, and so the trees have not grown to their full height, and there's not a sense of maturity, but there's a kind of pointing towards the center of the site, where the North Pool and the South Pool that represent the original footprints of the World Trade Center towers meet. So there's always a sort of engagement with the geometry of the memorial. But that last picture is really more of the large scale. It, really, this is the way you will see the building, a pedestrian kind of view. As you move around it, there are these sort of soft stripes that almost weave or sew their way through the trees of the plaza and give you a kind of a directionality. The building is, is moving, it's tilted, it's not orthogonal, it's kind of organic. Yet, at the same time, it rises up off the ground, so the glass that surrounds the lower portions of the building sort of reflect the memorial into the facade itself. So it's as if the horizontality that Michael Arad has created with the memorial design sort of passed through the building. And there's a kind of heaviness of this thing at one, at one point, but also a lightness on another. As you look uh, from the north facade towards the uh, west of the site, the World Financial Center, uh, and also as you look um, back in the other direction, there are these soft folds that catch the light in a very unique way, and, and the building is very kinetic. There's no electricity used in, in this kind of idea. It's a kind of organic thing. There are parts of the folds of the building where, as it just turns very slightly, like here, this V-shape, only one time during the day, during certain seasons, that V-shape will illuminate itself by the sunlight. And it'll just kind of pop there. It'll be there for about an hour and a half, two hours, and then it'll disappear. And that occurs on different parts of the building as you move around it. So it's always changing with time. And it's also kind of engaging with the ground in a unique way. So the, the facade sort of folds under, and you get these very unusual reflections uh, that bring the ground up and bring the sky down. And again, this is a very sort of dynamic form, so you're often kind of drawing your potential, your energy, uh, to uh, different sort of forms, different sort of movements that you can't quite pinpoint. There's a few windows in the building that have a kind of silk screen facade that draw this uh, uh, sort of uh, pattern from the metal panels across the glass, and those also take on a different quality during the day, and, and when this building is used, You'll be able to see people behind those windows. The facade itself reflects light in a very unique way. Uh, it's, it's kind of scratched and sort of pelleted. We, we sort of created these two textures in the, in the metal panels that don't create direct uh, reflections, but take the reflections and move them into a kind of geometry, a soft geometry. So if you see here, there's those black shapes are, are the skyscrapers very far away, and the other shapes are the trees nearby. The other thing is great, is that you, uh, when you stand at the bottom, you're immediately risen, you, you sort of want to look up to the sky. It's a very near sky. It's not a far sky like the, those of the skyscrapers, uh, the interaction of the skyscrapers. And that relates to, in a way, this shape, this sort of thing that you do with your body when you look up, is very much opposite of the thing you do with your body when you look down to the, to the, to the pools, to the memorial pools. So there's a sort of body movement that you're going to remember. You may not remember the shape of the look, but you'll remember these things that you did while you were there. So that's uh, what we hope will add to the future of the World Trade Center site. Thank you.